Welcome to Division Analysis, I'm Fog. In my last Descent video, I had only spent four runs in the Descent mode. Didn't know much about it. This time, I decided to do some more research, put what I knew about the open world game to good use, and this weekend just passed, I fended off my fears of DVT and stayed in the one spot for an extended period of time to see how far I could push into the descent. I'm going to cover some of the things that are important for this game mode, some of the strats and some deep level strats at that. Let's go. Now it's interesting that a lot of the things that I've already spoken out about in many of my videos actually come to an absolute head when it comes to this game mode. So it's probably why I find it so addictive. So let's get straight into it and we're going to start with offense. Now in previous videos I've spoken about what are called damage buckets. Now we have weapon damage, crit damage, total weapon damage and amplified damage. Weapon damage includes all weapon damage and specific weapon damage. Crit damage includes critical damage, crit chance, and then also headshot damage. Total weapon damage is as it says on the box, and amplified damage is again as it says on the box. Each one of those is with their own characteristic. There's also another couple of uh, damage buckets, which I have referred to about in the past. Health damage, armor damage, and out of cover damage, or what I've called impact damage in the past, but they play very little part in this game. A very small part, but a virtually not worth talking about, so we're not going to. We're just going to stick with the other five buckets. Base weapon damage is your weapon damage, and that is restricted to grey, green, and blue weapons, as far as I've been in the game at least. Uh, and then the other three buckets being weapon damage, total damage, and crit damage are all very similar in nature, in that everything that goes into them is additive with itself. So everything that's inside the weapon damage box adds with itself, Total weapon damage adds with other total weapon damage talents and crit damage and headshot damage. They all add together to produce a final result. Amplified damage is its own special category where everything that goes into that bucket creates a new bucket of its own, meaning that the everything that goes into that bucket is multiplicative. But what you need to understand about this game as a strategy is that every single one of these buckets is multiplicative. They all multiply with each other to produce an end damage result. And why is that important? And that's quite easy to explain. We have six talent slots available to weapon uh, to damage in general, on top of your base weapon damage. I mean, let's just keep it simple. There's six slots, and let's just, for argument's sake, say that every single talent can give you up to 100% damage. There are others that can give you more, but we'll just for argument's sake, six slots, 100% damage available from each talent. Now, we could just say that base weapon damage of the weapon is one, again, just for exemplary standards. And then if we were to go with all six talents inside the one box being weapon damage, that would total, because it's additive, inside that one box up to 600%. We give 0% to all the other talent types, and what that means is that you will get 600% damage on top of your 1, which totals 7 as your output. Now, when you have inside a box talents adding with each other, or additive in the traditional sense, what you get is diminished returns. Now in this case, we've had 1 as our base weapon damage, and we put 600% or 6 100% talents into the 1 box. Now when we added our first 100%, that brought our damage to 2, which is a full 100%. When we added our second 100% talent, it took us to 3 damage, third to 4, so on and so forth. That first jump from 1 to 2 is a 100% increase. The second jump from 2 to 3, however, is only a 50% increase. From 3 to 4 is 33%, and from 4 to 5 is 25%, so on and so forth. But what you can see very rapidly is you're getting diminished returns from adding to the same box, because it is additive. Now, if instead 
We take our base weapon, weapon damage one, and we now decide to split amongst two buckets. This time three talents, three weapon damage, three total weapon damage, and 0% of the other. And now what we get is a total output of 16, which is 300% on top of our one, making four, and then 300% of four, being 12 on top of that four, makes 16. So we've gone from seven to 16, being our, our total damage output. This works again if we distribute even further. So now we take our six talents and we put two in the weapon damage, two in the total, and two in the crit. And now what we get is 27 as our output. Let's go again and we'll put 150% into every single bucket. And now we jump to 39 as our total output. So we've gone from seven by putting everything into one to 39 by evenly distributing amongst all the boxes. And then with amplified damage, you have the special characteristic where everything inside that box is in fact multiplicative. So if instead we had six talents in the amplified damage box means that we'd have six multiplicative talents, your total damage output would in fact be 64. Clearly, amplified damage and a distribution of talents amongst each one of these buckets is the number one meta strategy. So, where do we find it? Weapon damage, this bucket is filled with close and personal, unhinged, optimist, and eyeless. Close and personal, I've tried to make work, but it is very hard to determine whether or not it is in working because it's normally displayed on the weapon, which is cluttered with a number of other talents vying for that user interface space. So it's very hard to determine whether or not it's fact working. It starts very, very low, but could become quite powerful as you move down. All you need to do is just kill targets close to you. Unhinged is the largest addition to your weapon damage that you can make with each step adding 18%. But the maximum that I've ever taken it to, I think, is level 4 or 5, because the offset is that you get a reduction in your stability and accuracy, meaning that you need to take up a utility slot to offset the negatives of Unhinged. You can determine whether or not that's worthwhile for you. Optimist is very good, and at tier 10, this is what it looks like meaning that for every 6% of ammo that's missing, you are getting a jump in your uh, weapon damage output. Doesn't work so well with Chatterbox and also Bullet Hell, the exotic talents. If you're not taking one of those, probably a must have in your weapon damage talent slot. And I've got a question mark over Eyeless. In the open world game, as it does in Descent, it says that it is a weapon damage talent, but in the open world it actually works out to be an amplified damage talent. I haven't been able to determine whether or not Eyeless is in fact amplified or weapon damage, because in this mode you start with 0% weapon damage. An important point is that you start at 0% weapon damage. But Eyeless, because it requires someone to be blinded, works well with Trauma, and you could also put it with the Burst of Firefly, I don't tend to use it because it doesn't work on robotics. And I like easy access, no thinking, damage talents. And I'm willing to take a little bit of a hit on the damage output if I don't have to think about it and it's active more often. That's why I generally don't go with that. Now the other important point is that the stat. What you select at your stats upgrade point, the weapon damage is an additive stat in this weapon damage bucket. So it is possible that you could avoid all the talents that associate with weapon damage and just use the upgrade of stats to be your weapon damage source. Not what I advise, but it is a strategy. But just remember that you are going to get diminished returns significantly and early from weapon damage upgrades because of this fact. You can also get weapon damage from these two exotics, 90% weapon damage from adaptive instincts. Again, it's one of those skills or talents that fights for UI space, so hard to see if it's actually working. Blind Justice, I haven't really gotten into it. 
Maybe someone's come up with a build with a burst of Firefly or something like that to make it work. I haven't yet, I avoid it. So critical damage, and I think this one is one that probably hasn't been taken advantage of well enough by the majority of the community. Sources of critical damage, on the left you've got your crit, traditional crit damage, on the right you've got headshot damage. I tend to avoid headshot because again it requires you to do a headshot. I don't want to have to think about it. If it happens it's nice. The weapons themselves have their natural headshot damage built in so you're already getting a diminished return from those stats. I'd rather get it from crit damage and crit chance which start at zero if you haven't purchased anything from the NSA vendor. The only source of crit chance in the red talents is surgical. If you're using strain, if you're re using critical, you have to have a source of crit chance. And that goes for also um, clutch as well when it comes to defense. So crit chance is important, but there are other ways to get it. One of the best ways, in my opinion, is to have a damage talent in the utility slot vindictive and it is also a very very good damage talent at that. Here you can see the level 10 vindictive stats giving you a massive boost to crit chance and crit damage and the time that it lasts for extends at each tier level. A must have for most builds in my opinion. You can also get crit damage and crit chance from both of these exotic talents, Adaptive Instincts, and the interesting one is Agonizing Bite. Agonizing Bite, normally a painful exotic talent to have because of the selection of, of target that you have to go for. And in my opinion, in this game mode, only valuable if you have a fast firing weapon. Two seconds of 100% crit chance can be incredible power, incredibly powerful. And with a fast firing weapon, in combination with one of the talents that I'm going to talk about in total weapon damage, is a devastating combination. However, when you get to higher levels, ammunition consumption and conservation becomes a real factor. And what you will find is that fast firing weapons very quickly will run out of ammunition and you'll be left with only one weapon type available to you, well not including your handgun, for those deep level strats. Obviously you can buy ammunition but as the ramping up of HP of those enemies gets worse and worse and worse, higher and higher and higher, you will find that you really need weapon systems with the least number of bullets to take them down in order to have those bullets last until you can get to your next supply case. So very very powerful and I'm trying to come up with some strats that can actually make this work and I'll talk about one of those later on because it is so good and it avoids having to take on surgical as one of your red talents and potentially put it into more damage rather than just the chance of that damage. Now total debt weapon damage in the open world must have talents. If you can't get amplified then total weapon damage is where you can get it but and that is because in the open world you only have three opportunities being your weapon talent which very rarely has total weapon damage you have your chest talent and your backpack talent so you're really fighting for those multiplicative um, stats wherever you can get them in this game however in this game mode it's actually the easiest to come by overwatch very very good for hybrid builds in the open world it's eight seconds at tier one that you need to be in cover in descent it starts at only five seconds and that decreases as you go up the ranks and it is essentially becomes almost like instant access which i like in talents here companion and spark come with the uptime characteristic companion you need a skill you need to denote a skill to being close to you with spark you need to denote a damage skill that's got to be doing damage in order for it to activate I've tried to make both of them work and I've found that uptime for both of them probably isn't to the level that's required in order to make them better than some of the instant access 10% talents like, for instance, composure. Just being in cover and you'll be in cover a lot. Concussion can be quite good, obviously has to be headshot activated. If you are playing run and gun, it becomes much easier to do headshots, well worth it. Vigilance, just don't take damage, but there are ways that you can structure your defenses in order to keep the uptime of Vigilance much higher. I'll talk about that when we get to defense. 
I've made Gunslinger work because you do swap between weapon systems quite often. Um, Versatile, I think, is the poor man's Gunslinger. It comes with a higher amount as far as its increments, but the weapon types I find that I never use, so I, I just avoid it. And the number one total weapon damage, in my opinion, is Obliterate. And at level 10, you are getting up to 150% total weapon damage, and all you have to do is hit your target and have crit chance. So if Obliterate's in your window, uh, which I strongly advise that it should be, then you need to adjust your crit chance to take maximum advantage of it. And that's the talent that works exceptionally well with Agonizing Bite. Then you have Amplified Damage, the golden standard of talents when it comes to weapon damage. I've got the question mark over Eyeless. Again, I don't like the activation and the uptime I would I would wager that the uptime, unless you're at level 10 trauma, and even then, running a firefly, I'm not sure that the benefits would outweigh some of the benefits of some of the other talents that are gonna be up majority of the time. But one which I absolutely recommend on every single build is opportunistic. At level 10, you are getting 50% amplified damage to every damage source that's hitting an enemy. So that includes not only your weapon damage, but it also includes things like the Plague of the Outcast damage, it includes skill damage, and it also includes like environmental damage. So every single build should have opportunistic, and the fact that it is a utility skill makes it an absolute no-brainer. Opportunistic, absolutely on your build. You can also get a small amount of amplified damage from Agonizing Bite. Glass Cannon is your traditional favorite amongst damage fiends for um, amplified damage. But in this case, the 60% offset damage to you in this game mode is an absolute no-no. Maybe during the early levels, if you've got no better options, maybe you can try to get away with it. But there, the margin of error is so small in this game mode, it's it's not worth it. In the open world, sure, you know where spawns come from. You, It's relatively open. You've got a lot of cover. In this game mode, you are going to be pressured, especially in the later, um, in the later stages. It's a no. It's a no from me. But the number one talent that I think has to be on every single build, no questions asked, the best talent in this game mode is breathe free. All you have to do is move and you will move all the time. 75% amplified damage. You are praying, at least I am, at every single exotic talent selections that RNG blesses you with that breathe free is one of those options. And once you've got it, you are set for probably 10 to 20 loops as far as your damage is concerned. Breathe free, best talent, get it every time. And those are the damage talents, those are where you can get them from. There are two probably notable mentions that aren't appearing on this list, which I did mention in my first ones as potentially like high ranking ones. And those two are Bullet Hell and Allegro. And although never having to reload is excellent, and that rate of fire increase does improve your burst damage, which is again also advantageous, both without any prerequisites, it's just instantaneous. At the end of the day, they do not add to your bottom line of damage. Your damage numbers will not go up. The rate at which you can deliver them does, but I think that having a higher level of damage outweighs the benefit of doing it quicker. And this comes back to the, the principle that I introduced a, a while back in one of my videos, which is the burst bubble. In my opinion, just like it is in the open world, if you have enough damage in your magazine to take care of what's in front of you, and the majority of that in this game mode will be taking down the first door that you encounter, or every spawn that happens at a door, if you've got enough damage in your weapon and on your build, to take care of that without having to reload, you have enough damage and increasing the speed with which you can take that down is not going to improve your overall longevity. So these two previous favorites, 
no longer in my builds. So that's the fundamentals of damage in this game, in this mode, and in this game in general, but specifically for this mode. Now you can base a strategy around just taking red and focusing on damage talents. And you can take that all the way through to the Nemesis, and here's two rounds of me doing exactly that and burning down the Nemesis in 20 or 30 seconds. But that's certainly not what I would consider to be the best strategy for this game mode. In the next video, I will take you through why I suggest taking blue at almost every single opportunity you can over red. I'll take you through the defensive side of Descent. I'll take you through some uh, builds that I think you can, or at least strategies for selections or talent selections that you can take into this mode and be very successful with and I'll also show you one I don't know whether it's a secret or not but it's certainly the very first time that I ever saw it was today post doing my run on the weekend and it would have made a massive difference to how far I could have gone which means that I need to go back and do it again I set myself the goal of making round for loop 40 on the weekend. I didn't quite get there. Here is the end to my illustrious one run. Uh, I hope you enjoy it and uh, I hope you liked the video. If you did, then hit the like button. If you want to see the rest of the strats that I've got for you and the defensive side of this game, then subscribe. But I will see you in the next one. Log out.
signs. Zero. 